Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Everything that you've been taught about dinosaurs is completely wrong. Well, that's not entirely true, but there are quite a few things that our paleontologist friends have been getting wrong. Let's take a closer look at what those dinosaurs were really like. Just don't get too close to that T-Rex, I heard he hasn't eaten in a while. Calm down, Rexy. Who's a good, terrifying boy? Speaking of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, take a second and picture the big, scary carnivore in your mind. Those large, sharp teeth, those snake-like scales. Pretty scary, right? Well, it turns out that Rexy here and most of the other dinosaurs probably had feathers. Scientists have recently found a new species of dinosaur known as Coolindodromius zabicalicus. Hope I got that right. Which has led them to theorize that feathers were most likely a characteristic of not just birds, but all dinosaurs. This is because our new dino friend was an Ornithosciscian beak dinosaur, which is distinct from past feathered dinosaurs that were of the theropod group. See, Rexy Boy isn't so scary when he just looks like a big chicken. Who's a good big chicken scary boy? But there's another animal that the Jurassic Park films made quite a bit more intimidating than they actually had been. The Velociraptor. Not only did they most likely have feathers, but the modern movies have led you to believe that these speedy little predators were as tall as humans. In reality, they were only about as tall as a medium-sized dog, or about half a meter. You probably still wouldn't want to keep one as a pet, but I think Chris Pratt would have seemed far less impressive up against these smaller raptors. Speaking of things that the Jurassic Park movies got wrong, it is now believed that dinosaurs didn't have that terrifying roar you hear in the movies. While that may have been a great way for Steven Spielberg to make the dinosaurs even scarier, they most likely cooed or quacked like a duck. Some believe they may have also grumbled like a crocodile, but not the immense roar that sounds like an over-exaggerated lion. But I still think you're pretty scary, you're my scary boy. Many scientists also believe that the dinosaurs probably didn't die out because of the impact of a giant asteroid. It most likely played a larger role, but it was just part of what led us to not seeing dinosaurs on our morning jogs. The impact of an asteroid surely would have killed the dinosaurs in the immediate vicinity. However, for the rest of the dinosaurs, their decline was far more gradual due to the other effects of the asteroid. For example, lack of food, as vegetation withered away because of the layer of ash that blackened the sky. It's also thought that because of things like changing climates, sea level fluctuations, and volcanic activity, the populations of dinosaurs were already on the decline before the asteroid even hit. All of this makes it pretty probable that it wasn't over super quickly. So did any of this surprise you? Do you think we'll learn even more about our dino friends in the future? I sure hope so, because I'm trying to potty train this T-Rex. If bringing dinosaurs back from the dead sounds interesting to you, think again. Let's explore the pros and cons of bringing back extinct animals in this video. Well, unfortunately for any Jurassic Park fans that are watching, dinosaurs aren't going to be brought back. Instead, more recent extinct animals, like the passenger pigeon that lived in the 19th century, will be resurrected. And that's because in order to bring these animals back, scientists need bits of their genetic material that have been salvaged. As always, I'm Blacko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.